What's up, everybody? Hey, do you ever sometimes just like feel like healings and miracles only happen from the Bible days? I've been guilty of that, just being real with you. Uh, but here today, I have a real life story of a miracle documented from going to doctors, to professionals who are just uh, amazed at what they seen or what they saw through the process. And there's really uh, no other way to explain it other than the hand of God. And the young man himself gives glory to God and was saying he was praying and his friends were praying. And I know his parents were praying. And today you'll get to hear from his parents, Carrie and Andrea Roberts, as they share of a real life miracle with their son, Kaiden. It's a phenomenal story. Uh, stick around to the end though. We have exciting news of what's going on in the month of February that you're going to want to hear. All that happens right after this. Hey, hey, welcome back to the When Words Don't Come Easy podcast. If this is your first time, I'm so happy that you have joined. You are in for a treat today. My name is Andy Howard. If I haven't met you, uh, well, it's good to meet you. But if you've been around and you're returning, you're in for a special treat. As I said, I got some good friends of mine who are just going to share a story of hope today, a story of faithfulness and God's God's awesome power. And I think it's for everybody. So no matter where you're at, maybe you, you're in need of a miracle yourself today, or well, this will be uplifting for you. Maybe this is for down the road, and you're going to have to remember this, this story today. But here are my good friends, Carrie and Andrea Roberts. Let's welcome them to the podcast. What's up, you guys? Andy, what's up, man? Hey, Andy. Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, so good well, to see you. It's an honor to have you here. And you guys have been dear friends of mine for a few years now going back. And uh, we have, mm -hmm. gosh, we've been through a lot together. I remember doing this Spartan <laughs> with you guys almost a year ago at this time yeah. uh, in yeah. Austin, Texas. And uh, that yes. was very fun. And just anyways, tell me a little bit. Of, I know you, I feel like I know you, but tell our listeners who you are, what you do for fun and uh, just a little bit about yourself so we can, so they can get to know you a little bit. All right. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm Carrie and Andrea yep. and uh, we've actually, Gosh, been married for 17 years now, and uh, we oh, both yeah. love music, and uh, we both love to help people with health. Um, in fact, that's probably two of our biggest passions outside of Christ, and so uh, that's been, yeah. Yeah, we are mom and dad of two beautiful kiddos, 10-year-old and uh, a 6-year-old, soon to be 7. Um, and yeah, we, uh, we, like Carrie mentioned, we have a huge passion for music, um, and of course health as well, and that's pretty much sums up. Like you said, outside of Christ, that's that's what we're all about. Yeah. You guys are incredible. And what's cool is when I was running the Spartan with you two, I got to see the kind of the fin and I don't know if finished product's the right word, but miles <laughs> away from where you were when you started. Uh tell us a little bit about your health journey, uh how much you lost and uh what led you to doing a Spartan. Sure. Um, yeah, I mean, puns puns intended. Uh, I would say it made a ton of a difference <laughs> to yeah. change my habits. <laughs> That's good. Our actually health journey began back in 2018. Um, I actually came across this program. Actually, our former pastor. Mm -hmm. I had saw a post on Facebook, and um, in the meantime, I was saying that I needed help for my mom because she had just battled cancer um, breast cancer she had gained a bunch of chemo weight but deep down i knew what i needed program mm -hmm. and personally had gone through some of my own health issues and so this was a perfect timing and long story short uh i was able to lose 50 pounds he got wow. on board lost 90 pounds yeah. um had tons of health improvements we could go around you know we could share all that as well but it's been an amazing blessing and then just knowing that you know our story leads to somebody else thinking wow could that be could that be for me you know and it's like yes it can you know and so yeah. that's been that's been awesome and i think the biggest part of that all that transformation weight loss is great health improvement is great but for me personally uh there's a lot of firsts for me with the kids that i i didn't experience before the first time jumping on a trampoline or my yeah. favorite story 
going on a walk with the kids. My daughter's riding a bike and, you know, I like to speed walk and she's like racing with me. And so I decided, mm -hmm. can I do it? Yeah, I'm going to smoke her. I know she's only eight, but I'm going to smoke her. <laughs> and so I took off to the end of the road and she caught up with me and she's beaming ear to ear. And I asked why she was smiling when you just lost. You got the big L. And she yeah. said, I've never seen you run before. And I'm like, dude, it's eight years. She's never seen me run. So it's like a lot of those mm -hmm. moments and being able to practice soccer with my son, uh, which we'll kind of go into in a second, but he had to take a season off. And that was one of the things that was heart wrenching was I got a new lease on life to spend with these kids. And part of it was kind of taken. Mm -hmm. That's incredible, yeah. man. Uh, both of you guys. And I absolutely just love that. I uh, love that you both, <laughs> incredible story, Carrie. I, I know it sounds, I, I've been there. That's why I relate uh, to my girls seeing me unhealthy for so much. So uh, now being able to do things and do Spartans with them and do fun things is so fun. Uh, we are going to talk. Yeah. The whole reason you're here was to kind of share the story of your son, Kite, and, and it, it's amazing. But before we jump into that, I, I do want to uh, – I want to give you guys a chance to – if there's someone out there – I know it's January. It, it's New Year's. Some people have probably already gave up on their New Year's resolution. It's the end of January. Somebody looking for hope today as far as their health goes, how can they connect with you? How can they uh, find you to – and uh, learn more about your program. Oh, thank you for asking. Yeah, so very good. Yeah. Um, well, social media is a great way. We are, you know, on Instagram and Facebook. Um, we're very relational. So we, we love just meeting people out and about for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, our story, you know, if it relates, oh my goodness, we would love the opportunity to connect and, and help more people. Um, that's really what we're passionate about is like Carrie mentioned, weight loss is great, but when you know on the other side what's possible, on the other side of actually feeling good, you know, and having the energy that just did not exist beforehand, that's a world of difference. And there's no price for right. that. Right. And I was at, uh, we all were actually at Valor at the winter retreat this past, uh, this past week. And you guys were brought mm -hmm. on stage and, and I've known you for years, but I didn't know this part. I, I know a bit of it and we have prayed for, mm -hmm. for Kaiden and, and First, before you jump into the story, I am going to ask, you know, you to share his testimony. But one thing you guys said from stage was what his name means. And even his name is powerful. I love that. So share what his name means. And then please uh, share some of the struggles Kaiden has battled. Sure. Yeah. I mean, Andrea has always loved the name Kai. She had a friend in high school that uh, she thought, you know, this would be a great name. Uh, I like the name Daniel. And for both of us, names mean a lot. And so uh, we looked it up and uh, Kai is actually pretty known globally on different cultures, but generally it means the keeper, whether it's of the gates or of the waters of the earth or something there, but it's keeper. Um, and Daniel is a well-known name, uh, is usually associated with God's justice, right? And so we decided, why not make this a composite name? And we named him Kaiden, which uh, would mean the keeper of God's justice. Um, so, you know, he's faithful and we just thought, you know, this speaks to highly of, of him. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. And I, he really has like lived up to that because even just even today, he, yeah. any, anytime there's a situation, his first instinct is to pray and yeah. lay hands and pray which I just think is so amazing. Like yeah. he does it. He's the first one always to just pray over the situation. Mm -hmm. And that is coming from a kid who went through, who's been through a lot a of like lot, struggles, yeah. but that is just his, always his first instinct. If he hears an ambulance, mommy, let's pray right now. I mean, he's done that since he could speak. And I just, I just find that so awesome how God just kind of has just worked that in him, you know? Yeah, so good. Yeah, that is, that is great. And that's how kiddos are right we learn so much from kids and i think that's why you hear so many references in the bible even to for for that childlike faith and for us to i don't know we could learn a lot from our kiddos uh wait, would you tell us or dive in a little more uh on, on some of the things he's battled sure um i guess I'll, I'll start off by um so kaiden you know from birth i mean he had a had a healthy pregnancy everything was great um, but we knew soon after he was born he we could not lay him down without him throwing up it was 
literally could not do a diaper change. We could not actually for the first two years of his life, I pretty much held him as he would sleep because if I didn't, he would just continuously throw up. And so we knew something was obviously off and he did have pyloric stenosis where they had to go in and open up the pyloric opening and, um, you know, reflux and all the things that they would say. Um, and until they dug a little further, it was around eight months old. So multiple kind of upper endoscopies going through all that, recognizing there's something, you know, food allergy, something's off. Um, so finally he had the diagnosis of what's called a cynophilic esophagitis, EOE. And basically it's an inflammation in the esophagus. That's actually an autoimmune disease where you, your body just reacts a certain way to certain foods and builds up what's called a cynophils, which then can cause like a stricture in the esophagus. So, and then just damage. And so we knew he had to avoid certain foods and had actually some severe food allergies, which we discovered, unfortunately, the hard way. Um, and that was a scary experience. Uh, so since birth, you know, every six months or so, he's had to have what's called like an upper endoscopy where they go in and look um, at his esophagus and see, you know, how he was managing. And it wasn't until actually up to last year where he finally had what's called a clean scope and he was in what they call remission, which was awesome. And what I mean by that was he still was on medication for the for what needed to be treated and then also avoiding certain foods. So and you think like that's not a big deal, but for a child, um, it's hard. Like you can't go anywhere without like dairy and you know yeah. nuts everything has everything in it so it's just become very difficult um going to parties going to we wanted to take the kids last year to disney and i'll kind of touch on that a little bit later but we had to end up canceling that trip at the time because i just felt like oh my goodness i can't take this child to another place where we have to say no you can't no you can't no you can't like it just was it was challenging so with that said um that's kind of been his main struggle and then it was fall of 2021 where mm -hmm. carrie had mentioned you know we started noticing he I mean, he loved soccer but on the field he would have these pauses like he would just stop and kind of just sit there like he was almost like he was frozen and we're like something's not quite right but then he would just go back to what he was doing um so we kind of just were wondering like what that was all about didn't put too much thought into it and being at the time, he was in kindergarten at the time, and so I actually was homeschooling him at the time. Um, our daughter goes to Valor, as as you know, as your daughters go there as well, and you can't start that till second grade. So he was gonna stay home with me, that was the plan for kindergarten, and then the following year we were gonna do a private school here in our area. But long story short, I started noticing some challenges with schooling. He would have lots of pauses, but he would never remember mm -hmm. what happened. And so what, what we, he was experiencing at the time, we didn't know it was called absent seizures, um, but things kind of progressed. And the, one of the most significant episodes happened actually on Christmas day, where he was running up the stairs. And when he get up to the top of the stairs, he would do what's called wandering. He would wander and then walk backwards, where if you don't know if you're walking backwards, you could walk down the stairs and not be aware. And then he would have like, say some gibberish, um, and then I knew something was off and I really actually picked up on, I was like, here, I think he's having seizures. Um, and so we knew that we needed to get him to see somebody. And again, long story short, we did take him in, they did testing and immediately they, they recognized that he was having, he was having multiple absent seizures. So they mm -hmm. gave him that diagnosis of what's called childhood epilepsy. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, that's, that's kind of where things started and got really yeah, ugly <laughs> there, there were pretty notable um scary moments you know where he'd play in the basement he'd be totally normal then all of a sudden he'd have that blank stare and when he comes back to he has to take all his clothes off his heart's racing uh he's mm -hmm. confused he doesn't know what happened uh, has no memory of the incident uh, so it's just it got harrowing and uh what's strange about it is activity is what uh, a lot of times would yeah, trigger exertion. Some, yeah mm -hmm. so the soccer field became something he couldn't do, uh, something that he loved uh, the most, he wasn't able to do. He's a little boy, you know, kindergarten, yeah. he can't run around. No swimming. No swimming, can't run up and down stairs, or not run, but not even walk up and down stairs without supervision. Uh, so in a matter of just a couple short weeks, it was what it felt like. I mean, it was right. maybe over a month or two, but in a short period of time, uh, his world radically changed, um, wow. much more restrictive. Yeah. yeah. It's gotta be so hard. I'm sorry. That's got to be so hard for you as parents. I know I can relate. 
with everything that Peyton had going on. And, and sometimes the unknown is, uh, it's just harder than, I don't want to say harder than the diagnosis, but sometimes just the unknown, your mind plays tricks on you and, and you all, it's hard. We want to stay positive, but you can't help but think about, Oh no, what could be. And so after, uh, after you got the diagnosis and, and you found out, that he was having seizures. Uh, what challenges did you guys come across next? So, yeah, it was actually right, believe it or not, Andy, it was right before the Valor retreat. They wanted to start a medication. And so we started that medication knowing that we were leaving for Arizona for, for Vera's school retreat it, last year. Yeah, this is last year. This is last year. And um, the night the night before, it was two nights before we left, he had what we thought was actually a reaction to the medication. And so we had to make the decision, are we going to still go to Valor and just go through with it and just basically take him unmedicated? And we knew that was going to be a challenge and he needed to be supervised the whole time, but, or were we going to cancel our trip? Like what was, what were we going to do? And of course we prayed about it and we we're like, I think we're still supposed to go to Valor and we're just going to not put him on medication yet. And so we ended up going to that retreat. Obviously we, we had been praying, people started praying. Um, and while we were there, it was extremely nerve wracking. Helicopter you know that, parents. <laughs> yeah, we were the helicopter parents, like at the park, like we wouldn't let him walk off the, you know, because he would ha you would see it happening all the time. For most people, they wouldn't pick up on it, but we knew what was happening. We'd have these gibberish kind of moments and- Or wandering when he's on the playground about to, you know, go on monkey bars. I mean, it's- yeah, it was <laughs> it was really concerning. And, and then knowing like, oh, my gosh, like because we didn't have the MRI yet. We just knew that he had seizures, but we didn't know why he was having them. Right. So was there a tumor? Was there was all the unknown? Like you said, that's actually more scary than having the diagnosis. Yeah. And then we went to Sedona and that was really the most like that was heart wrenching because yeah walking up the hill i mean he was just multiple episodes walking up this hill and i just knew something is really wrong um where things came to a head is when we did get back he we had our nanny was actually with him um, in the daytime and she said that he had an episode where she didn't he didn't recognize her at all and um when i called they said you need to bring him in so we took him directly in and again, long story short, they tried to look, you know how they look at your pupils and they could not see, I guess, past whatever they're supposed to see. And there was, there is a, there's a name and I can't think of what it is right now, but it's an emergency is what they originally thought. So all they said is we don't have time. Just if you can go ahead and take him to Fairfax, which is another hospital, we need to make sure that there's not something serious wrong. We we say that because then Kaiden, I mean, he was just lethargic, not well. Um, yeah, he was like peakish at times. It was, yeah, frail. it would. So we literally like this is emergency. We didn't know at the time. We were like, is it a tumor? Is it you know what's happening? So Carrie, I called him and thank God we again we we're very blessed to be able to be home. And so there was no coordinating. We just got in the car, we went, and um, that's when they admitted him and again did a bunch of tests and found out he's still seizing quite a quite a bit and so they had up they put him on medication um they were able to get the seizures to stop which was great um and so we thought we were in the clear you know and he was able to be home for his birthday um and so we're really grateful for that and and again the seizure stopped and that was that was important but unfortunately it led to basically a a year of ex just horrible side effects yeah he got put on a different medication and um at first it seemed to help the first couple of weeks but as as time progressed uh it had some profound uh effects on him including bedwetting which he didn't have an issue with extreme night terrors and paranoia personality and mood changes um it was like he kept saying bad thoughts he was having bad thoughts yeah, yeah. um and just things that you know we we we're <laughs> Our kids are very like we we watch what they watch. They're they're not exposed to anything right, that would be yeah. like quote unquote scary or anything like that. It was Excuse strange. me. Um, and yeah, it was just it was really it was just heart wrenching to see your kid go through that. And so the nights, I mean, our sleep was affected. It was it was rough. <laughs> it was it's just hard. rough. It is so hard. Yeah. I, we can relate to that with with Peyton, it was all hands on deck for the family. It's, it was her battle, her challenge, but it affected all of us. And I can say the same thing yeah. here 
with you guys uh and it's your baby <laughs> so of course you're willing to do it but it still takes a toll on you guys so so what happened next uh you, this is you did have a a diagnosis at this point did, or did they figure it out yeah, or like, you guys your own medications felt like we finally got a plan yeah, but like, then, yes. then there's more challenges though right Right. Well, when we were at that hospital, the, the good news is that they ruled out the serious situation. Yeah, they, got right? they did the MRI, yeah. you know, they did the MRI while they, we were there. They did all the testing and they just confirmed that, yes, this is just, which I say just because it could be much worse. Right. And I mean, I know you have your situation with Peyton. Kaiden hasn't experienced any of the tonic clonic seizures. Right. So he's not. I can't even put it in the same category. These absence seizures are what's called childhood epilepsy. And the good news is, is for the most part, we hear that one of two things will happen. They will grow out of it, typically around puberty. This is what they told us, mm -hmm. okay? Um, but there is a possibility, yes, it could affect learning and things along the way, but as long as he gets medicated, he should be okay. Um, but that there's a very strong possibility that he could develop other types of seizures. You know, doctors are always going to give you the down low yeah. of like what's to come, right? right. Um, we just knew that he had a normal MRI, so we were grateful for that and that, okay, we've been given this quote unquote diagnosis. So we're going to follow doctor's orders for right now. We're on the meds. Um, but unfortunately, like we had just brought up, the meds ended up side effect after side effect. So we started to see Kaiden, although the seizure stopped, he was going down a so, not a spiral, you know, his stomach started giving him all these issues again. He wasn't eating. He wasn't. Yeah. yeah. It, it just was one thing after another. And then come this past, we made it through the summer, but it was like in and out of the hospital at times, you know, chest pain. I mean, you name it. It was. Oh yeah. Chest yeah. Pain. You forgot about that. Oh <laughs> like gosh, many yeah. visits there, like it kind of all becomes a blur. Um, but long story short, again, I guess that's my favorite phrase because I feel like I'm trying to wrap this up, you know, not keep you here forever. You should have been but, faster. You know? <laughs> but, uh, but um, you know, come this past late summer, um, our, my, my dad had passed away and that was obviously um, a pretty difficult time, obviously. And along with that, like when we came back from, you know, basically going down to, I guess, put him to rest, basically, we started noticing Kaiden had a huge uptick in his asthma. And so he now not only had all the stomach stuff, but now he's having all this upper respiratory things. And so the the um, CT scan came back that he had like inflammation in his lungs and like, it just was like all these extra stuff that's now he didn't have issues with and now there's right. these red flags and the blood work needed to be redone every x amount of weeks and and i was thinking i'm like lord what is going on and why you know and i'm sure you <laughs> you can relate to that more than anyone here but like what is happening and you know what is what is the purpose and i just i was grateful we have an awesome community obviously lots of people praying and you know, our friends, um, Jess and Ken, they had a son who actually went through having a kid who had epilepsy, who actually also grew out of it. Um, he, it's a miracle story in itself. And I do believe God allows you to see other people's situations for hope, yeah. as in maybe somebody sees this, because they were a huge encouragement that, you know, have you ever considered like that he could actually maybe even be healed of this. Not that we didn't consider that, right. but hearing that other testimony always then it just kind of boosts things a little bit, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So that was, we kind of pressed in and continued to pray. And um, I really, we both kind of felt like the Lord was saying, come off the medication. Wow. Yeah. I love, I love this. And, and what you'll hear me say, Andre, I'm going to tell on myself, my, my favorite phrase is I love this the more I hear these podcasts. I say, I love this all the time, but I do, I mean it with all my heart. I love this. And what happens though, and that's why I don't want you to apologize about making a long story short. It's because these people need to hear the background. <laughs> they need to, and this is just, uh, this is as much as we can do in a 30 minute or 45 minute podcast, however long this goes, but they need to know because I want them to hear what happens next and they can't appreciate what happens next. If we don't hear a little bit about what happened first. So you've heard all this yeah. up to this point. Now I want you to, I want you to tell us how God showed up. What what happens yeah. next? I, 
I know everybody's waiting. Yeah, so um, the, the beautiful part is Carrie and I have been on the same page, you know, which is awesome. And so, of course, we had been praying into it, um, of course, have friends praying and even his little friends, like I say, it's such a beautiful testimony because and when you hear this part, when Kaiden goes eventually is able to come back to school, he 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 tells a story and it's 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 really cool how he yeah. sees it from his perspective but around october um i had reached back to the doctors and i'm like listen this medication is something's off right and as a mom and as dad we know something is off and even though yes the seizures have stopped but all this other stuff is happening and i said you know how about if he's healed of this like how about if this is all over and now we're just feeling like i'm poisoning my child because i'm just told to give a medication so met with the doctors and i kind of was like listen here's what here's what's happening <laughs> i really believe that god is doing a work in in kaiden's body and i would love the opportunity to prove that the seizures are gone and so which made them super uncomfortable, made by the way. Made them super uncomfortable. <laughs> and Kaiden was, now I know I mentioned I homeschooled last year, but this year we were able to put him into a private school. And so he was at a private school, but he was in and out, in and out with all the sickness, yeah. okay? Constantly. I mean, we were back and forth picking him up. And so I said, how about, and there's stairs right outside his classroom door. So we were not comfortable taking him off medication to sending him to school because his episodes typically happened around stairs because of the exertion that it takes to go upstairs. So I said, how about if he comes off all medication, we monitor him home because we have the ability to do that. Thank, thank the Lord. Um, and we do an at home EEG so they can see, then you'll know. And they they push back a little bit. They're like, well, we would prefer if you're going to take him off this medication, let's bump, let's transition him to this medication. And if you know anything about absence seizures, there's three medications for the most part that you can be on for this type of seizure. Kaiden already had a no go with the first one, and which so is the most effective. Which is the most effective, yeah. and he had what's called a reaction. They think they don't know for sure, but that's what they think happened. The second one had horrible side effects, so we're down to one more. And when I looked at and again, you're trying not to read into everything, but it didn't look like a great option, put it that way. And kids who have allergies, they're saying like that's more, you know, prone to this, blah, blah, blah. So I was, it was nerve wracking. I'm not, you know, that was very um, nerve wracking to, to think, but we had already, I had already started weaning him off the medication. And so when the doctor said to me, I said, they just kind of prepare you like, listen, it's very rare that he could outgrow this before puberty. I want you to know that and be prepared that we're going to have to find a medication for him. And even more rare for it to be in less than a year. Right. Yeah. Even more rare. They at least want to see a child on medication for at least two years before they will ever Consider. entertain that you're healed or that it's gone away. So um, kind of against uh, their their of what they're wanting to do right but they at least i was i was really grateful they were at least saying hey we'll do the eeg at home and if you're taking off medication that's that's your choice that's not our recommendation but you know go for it basically so but she also prepped it like don't be surprised if this comes back and we have to figure all this out so we're like okay lord um and we just prayed and um that weekend that he was here home and of course he had been home now since almost october because all this was going on health wise and they did the eeg and we met with the doctor and she had said that she's going to email the results because they were not quite in yet and i'll never forget because we were driving back um we were in the car when i got the results and it just said um i'm pleased to 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 share that the EEG com came back completely clean of absent seizures and she's like I am extremely surprised because this is not um sorry I get like almost emotional when I start thinking about yeah. it but this is not not a common thing you know that that could happen for him and so um it just it was a flood of emotions knowing that like yeah. he was able to gonna be able to resume his normal life without having all these restrictions with the medications you know like that was 
it sounds so simple. Like sometimes I think like, oh, it's not that big of a deal. I was like, no, it is a big mm-hmm. deal. When you actually look at the big picture, especially when you have a kid in in Kaiden's situation, um, Andy, where he actually, I, I just kind of always like to put perspective, right? Yeah. But imagine being in this little body and everyone's telling you these things are happening, but he has zero recollection. All he knows is he was able to do all these things and now he can't. But he, if you're really looking down into it, he doesn't know that he was spacing out or he doesn't know that he talked gibberish. Like he has no oh. recollection of that. You know, so when you put yourself in that perspective, imagine being that little kid and like all these people are telling me I'm having episodes. Like, what does that mean? Yeah. Like he doesn't know, <laughs> you know? It's not like, you know, your arm's hurting, you've got a cast or something and you can see that it's hurt. like, he doesn't know. All he knows is now I'm on this medication that gives me these horrible thoughts. And I can't play soccer. I can't play the games. I can't wrestle with daddy. I can't do any of that stuff. Right. And then, and so, um, yeah. So when we were able to tell him that, I mean, he just lit up like <laughs> this, like the happiest thing in the world. And, and because he had his friends pray. And then when he yeah. was able to go back to school, and everyone was of course excited to see him and they're like he would just say my friends have been praying for me and god healed me jesus wow. healed me you know <laughs> just, <it's so> cool. <laughs> that is so cool and it's awesome uh that he knows that what, the power of prayer you, you started this interview at the very beginning saying he's always been a man of prayer a child of prayer and that is so cool that he's going to grow up his life. It's one of the hardest things I think for most of us <laughs> humans to to wrap our minds around is the power of prayer. And I'm grateful. I was raised in a family that believed in it from the beginning, from as long as I can remember. Uh, but that is so cool. And getting the last weekend at the retreat when when you guys were called on stage and even the uh, the special guest speakers like is he here? Is he here? Get him up here. (laughs) And that was just powerful when he was up on stage praying for others, even at his, what do you say? Six, seven years old, or is he eight? I I'm bad with ages, but even at his age, that's so cool. So, so what's next? I I know uh, he's been healed. You, You got the email, you got the proof of it, but, but what are you doing going forward just to, obviously we're, we don't want to do anything ridiculous or crazy. Uh, we have faith, we trust God, but, but what's next from, from here on out? I'll continue contending. I mean, there's so many things that swirl through my mind when I hear all this, when we recount it, first and foremost, there's no such thing as a testimony without a test and nobody likes tests. Okay. (laughs) Um, but you know, one thing that I know that our Lord promised us is that in this world, there will be troubles. And I think one of the things that's hard a lot of times, you know, we've had one well-meaning friends and, and strangers say things like, it's just not fair, you know, uh, why would God allow stuff like this? And they don't mean anything by it. It's, you know, they're, they're grieving with us to a degree. What we have to remember is that this world is broken. And, and some of us get um, decks that aren't full and repeating cards and missing cards, right? And so uh, we don't always have the answer. But what I've learned so far, I've learned a few things in this process. For me, number one, Look at his little life and his impact of all those people around him. It's not just what he's learned, but it's actually drawn us closer to God in Christ. Like we've spent more need time. We've dove into the Bible more. We've actually been hearing the Lord's voice a lot more. I think a lot of this too is, especially with me and my own insecurities, like am I going crazy or is this really God speaking? Mm -hmm. And then the way he would confirm it in a myriad ways, but this has been a very important thing because he says his sheep knows his voice. And it's something we're supposed to pursue, right? We are supposed to have an intimate relationship with him. And so it's one of those things, unfortunately, with human nature, when everything's good, I think is one of the most dangerous things. It's probably why he says, um, you know, it's easier for a wealthy person to go through the eye of a needle, which is an idiom I don't fully understand, than to get into heaven. I think it has more to do with the fact that when we're comfortable and cozy, we don't quote unquote need God. But when we have these trials, it forces us to realize that it doesn't matter who we are. He's no respecter of persons. We all need him. Yes. And so it, it's been so good um, in terms of our heart's position towards him. And I, I pray that that never leaves. In fact, we want to press in more. Right. And so to ask what's next, you know, well, he still is challenged with EOE. Why not that, Lord? You know, what are you saying? Let's pray and for that. 
Why not others, you know, friends and family and, and their stuff like this teaches us we should be interceding for others. Right. And for him, why shouldn't he intercede for others? Mm -hmm. And so this is really more an opportunity, to, again, to spend more time in the garden, spend more time with the Lord and ask, what can we do individually? What can we do as a couple? What can we do as a family right. um, to pray, to intercede and to help others? Yeah, I absolutely love that, man. There, there's no testimony without the test. That is so good, yeah. Gary. And uh Dude, I, I do feel I do feel like God's allowed it to happen. Uh not that he wanted this to happen to your baby, your boy, but that he is making something good. The Romans 828 of it is coming out of this this part of his life where he's making something good of these trials so that he can uh, grow up remembering how faithful and how good God is and he can help others with it. So cool. It's something we don't always do here on the podcast. I, I'm definitely not against it. Maybe I should do it more, but, uh, I wanted, I asked you earlier if, if you would mind praying over, maybe somebody is, who knows how they found this podcast. Somebody recommended it or they stumbled upon it or, but for whatever reason, they are in need of healing today. And I, I was hoping one of you would just pray a prayer over them. Maybe, maybe this is, five years from now when they stumble upon it. I know our God is ever present. So he's going to use this, yep. this episode to help somebody at a time in, in their need. So uh, would you guys mind praying uh, a simple prayer over whoever might be listening right now? Sure. sure. Absolutely. Well, first and foremost, Father, we thank you so very much. You are great beyond our understanding. We thank you so much for your faithfulness. We know that you've loved us from before we were even born, that no part of our life is an accident. There's nothing that surprises you. And Lord Jesus, I ask first and foremost to refresh our faith and our understanding and our joy in you, even through hard times. But most importantly right now, your children need you. Your children need you. We know, we know that you understand the trials that they go through, what no one else understands. And so we ask, Lord Jesus, that you, you speak, you administer to their heart, that they might be encouraged to know that they're not alone. Yes. Even when the world doesn't understand, you're with them. Lord Jesus, it says that by your stripes, we are healed. And so, Lord Jesus, we lean into that. We don't always understand the timing and the reasons for things, but we know you're faithful. So even now, Lord Jesus, we're praying. How many times were miracles asked for and that you said it wasn't time, but yet you acquiesced because we leaned in. And so now we ask you for that favor. Our Savior, our King, our Lord, we ask you to administer even now that you release your finished work from the cross right now to loose the bounds of depression, Lord Jesus, to loose the bounds of hopelessness for debilitating pain lord jesus we ask you to loose it even now the crippling pain lord jesus that would have us lose our income for whomever that is for lord jesus the uh the crippling pain lord jesus that would have us lose our sense of worth lord jesus we ask you to show how much you've loved will continue to love and are with them even now and Lord Jesus, if there's anything that we're holding on to that we need to release, Lord Jesus, show it to our hearts even now that we might release it to you. That no lying accusation of the enemy can be held against us, but even now your healing work can be finished and proven true right here, right now in our mortal bodies. Yes. I thank you for complete healing. I thank you that even the wisest of minds will be confounded that you are able to do what is impossible. Thank you, Jesus. You've knit us in the womb, Lord Jesus. You know every hair on our head, and you know every tear we've cried. And even now we rest our pain, we rest our suffering, we rest in you, that you might grant us peace, and that health and life and vitality is in you, that we might run and not be weary. We thank you for all these things in your, in your holy name. We pray. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys, so much. Uh, I did have something on my heart. I just want to say, and I wanted to say this before the prayer, but it, 
my mind's always racing. But I I, uh, I saw this episode last night. We Tiff and I watched with the girls before bedtime. And now we're going through the Chosen series, and we got to uh, we're it's part of season three. I don't know exactly which episode, but uh, Little James, <laughs> as they call him on there, uh, was referring to uh, was talking to Jesus, and they were about to send them out to pair them up in twos and he said you'll, you'll go do miracles and you'll do all the things i've taught you and uh and he was saying but but god and in, in this and in the chosen they they uh he has some kind of issue i don't remember exactly what it is if it's a, a limp or or what but he's he hasn't been healed himself yet and he said how can i heal somebody when when i haven't been healed yet and and i often uh i mean that hit home for me uh with Peyton and so many times and people mean well you, you guys you all shared that earlier they mean well but sometimes people are people so I don't take it personally but there's been times when people are like man if you just had you know if you just had this if you just had more faith or this or that and that hit home that uh what well, he responded back to little James and I know this is not the bible so don't start sending me a hundred emails of why you shouldn't follow <laughs> it. it's entertainment right? This is their version of what they saw. And I love the storyline behind it. But what he said still ministered to me, whether or not it was biblical or not. But he said, James, I trust you. <laughs> I trust you with this. And just think of how many people, all these other people, uh, they need to see the miracle uh, to believe, but you have still believed without receiving your miracle. And I'm paraphrasing. If I butchered it, don't email me on that either. Yeah. <laughs> but please yeah. know, if you're out there, my my encouragement would be: maybe you're out there and you prayed the prayer Carrie just prayed over you thousands of times, and for whatever reason, you haven't been healed yet. <laughs> you haven't been healed this side of heaven. Uh, just be encouraged by that, knowing that God trusts you, and He He loves you enough that. Yeah that for whatever reason, he's allowed you to carry that so that you can help others with what you're going through. So I absolutely have enjoyed our time together, guys. Yeah. It's been, oh, thank you so thank much. Thank you. And I really appreciate you sharing that portion as well. Yes, Andy, yeah. that's something actually Carrie and I've talked about many, many, many times. Um, and so I just really appreciate you sharing that yeah. because I think it's so, so important for people to re recognize that. Um, and know that there's a reason for everything, and he's yeah. still good, no and matter. And they need to know how much they're loved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. real quick, will you tell people one more time uh, how they can find you? I know you mentioned social media. Uh, go ahead and throw your your handles out there uh, for IG. I know in Facebook and whatever that you would like. I would love for them to be able to connect with you and find you, and especially if they're in need of of health. Uh, you guys offer that have an amazing program that works wonders there. Uh, or if they just want to uh, connect with you as far as y'all's story, uh, how can they find you again? Yeah, absolutely. Instagram and, and Facebook are, are the, the easiest ways to get a hold of us. Um, Andrea Roberts, uh, Andrea.Roberts on Instagram, at Andrea.Roberts. Uh, and I'm uh, Carrie A. Roberts. Don't do the underscore. That was a previous account that got hacked. But <laughs> <laughs> Carrie A. Roberts. <laughs> I'm trying to make my way over to Instagram. I'm actually more so on Facebook. Okay. Um, but yeah, so, and it's just Andrea Roberts, A U N D R I A, yeah. um, and then Roberts. Yep. That is, that's our profile. That would be the best awesome. way. Awesome. Well, email it... would be. Like oh, yeah. That. If you have an email, throw it out there as well. Yeah, Carrie, that's C A R E Y and Andrea Roberts. So C A R E Y A N D A U N D R I A Roberts. I know it's a mouthful, but it's easier to remember. At gmail.com. At gmail.com. <laughs> yep. Well, you, you guys are awesome, and, and I can attest to that. I've known you for a while, and you're just as genuine as you came across today on this podcast. So thank you for taking the time to do this. It's always fun connecting okay. with you. and. And we love you guys so much and wish the best for, for both your kiddos, for Vera and Kaiden, uh, that God just continues to to bless him and continues to use his story. But thanks so much for joining me. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank thanks, you. Andy. Thanks, Andy. Right. Bye. You're welcome. Bye, guys. Yep. Wow, wasn't that just awesome? I hope that Kaiden's story just blessed you. Uh, I hope that you will take away hope 
from his story and be able to apply it in your life, wherever that is. Maybe, maybe you need healing yourself. Maybe you have a child, grandkid, a neighbor, whoever it is who is in need of healing today. I just wanted you to know that miracles still happen and there is uh, still hope for you today. So, so grateful for you. And I also wanted to let you know about what's coming up in February, the love month, right? It's Valentine's Day and all the things. So I'm so excited for a brand new series called the Self Love Series, where we will take on all four fun topics from uh, Valentine's Day itself. I will have my special guest, my sweetheart joining me, but we'll do mind, body, spirit, and finances, four of the coolest uh, areas that we could all use some self-love in. So I hope you would join us there. As always, if this has been a blessing to you, please share this episode with somebody. Tell them more about the When Words Don't Come Easy podcast and how it's blessing you and how it's helping your life, because I always want this to be a show about hope and helping others. And the way we do that is by spreading the love and by getting it out there. So if you don't mind, leave a review, subscribe, pass it on. And as always, you can find more at andyhoward.com. I would love to help get the word out about my book. You can find it on Amazon. You can find it on Audible. And even <laughs> if you're a Kindle person, we have it there. I really need to get better at, at promoting myself. I hope you have enjoyed today's episode. Thanks for joining. And I can't wait to see you in February for the self love series. God bless everybody. Thanks so much for tuning in. If this episode helped you in any way, it would mean the world to me if you would leave a review and share it with somebody else. Thanks so much. I'll catch you next time.